Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today's tech session is about blockchain. I'm going to introduce myself briefly. My name is Diane Bungai, who doesn't know, who doesn't know me. I don't, I don't want to be inside the, <laughs> this podium because I'm, I feel like it's covering me. I also don't want to go too far because last year's recording, I couldn't hear myself. So I'm just going to stay here near my computer. Uh, I've been a software developer for about eight, almost nine years now. And half of that is here with Solution Street. So I've been here about four, four and a half years. So, um, yeah, that's just a little bit of background. Um, so I'm going to talk about blockchain. Oh, whoa, whoa, no. Okay. So they say, evangelists say that blockchain is the next big thing after the internet. Can you imagine that? It's like, it's like wow, internet, internet changed my life. Internet changed our lives. In the 19th, if you can see the letter, uh, words, 1970s mainframe, PC, 1990s, the internet, the social media in the 2000s, and they're saying in 2010, it's the blockchain. That's like the next big thing. It's such a big buzzword. Um, when I, when I registered for a tech session about blockchain, at least three people talked to me and like, Diane, you're going to talk about blockchain? Like, I want, you beat me. I wanted to talk about that or whatsoever. Or like, tell me about it or whatsoever. So it's just, I'm happy that like people are excited to hear about it, know about it, and they even want to do their own tech session about it. But at the same time, I'm also a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous about giving this talk because I am not at all like an expert of blockchain. I, I I'm going to tell the story on how I get into it, but um, you know, I've just I read a lot about it, um, but it, but it's very it's a very complex technology. Uh, so hopefully um, today's tech session will have a little bit of clarification, a little bit of a starting point for us all to get started talking about it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> okay. So as I mentioned, I'm going to talk about how I got into blockchain. So this is a little part of my living room. That's my dog right there at the point of reference. Can anybody tell what this thing up here is? It's like, it's like sitting in my living room right now. I'm mining. Yeah, we have a rig. Yeah, no. <laughs> There's a rig at home. My, sometime last year, my boyfriend decided to set this up in our living room. There's another one. Well, first it was both in the office room. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, what is that? I, I, and then he's like, oh, I'm mining um, some digital cur digital currency or whatever. I'm like, ah, I know that. And I'm like, that's Bitcoin. I'm like, yeah, but this, I'm not mining Bitcoin. And, and he started talking about it a little bit. But I'm like, ah, okay, okay. I'm just, you know, I know a little bit of that, but I didn't care much. He's, that is his thing. It's his money. He said it's like he bought, this is just one of the rigs he has to. Um, so I didn't care much. A month later, our electricity bill okay. <laughs> and I'm like what is this what is this our electricity bill didn't just double it tripled so I'm like what is, what is this thing doing why does it have so much why does it need so much electricity why, what is going on and that is when I started looking into it and then I and like briefly when I read about it like what is what is mining what's what is it doing and it's at a very high level it would just say um, it's doing a computational, a math problem. It's solving a, it's computing for math problem whatsoever. And I'm like, what could it be computing that it needs that much electricity? Like, I'm a programmer. I can probably do whatever they're doing. Can I like code something and like compute whatever? Because computers are fast. I'm smarter than them, right? I'm, we are smarter than computers. So I'm like, whatever it's computing, maybe I can do it. And like, I was so curious, what exactly is the math that, it, that this is trying to solve? So. I read more and more about it, and that's when I'm like, oh, okay, it makes sense. Whatever it's trying to do, it has to do it, and we're going to talk about um, what, what that is. Okay, uh, um, so at a very high level, I'm going to talk about blockchain, how it works, um, the, and we're going to do a little bit of coding. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to talk about some use cases, and of course, as any other technologies, there are limitations too blockchain. Okay. So the blockchain was invented um, by a person or a group of person. We don't know. They're anonymous. He or they are anonymous. Um, by a, 
people, a person named Satoshi Nakamoto, um, when in 2009, when he introduced Bitcoin. So he, in 2009, he just introduced Bitcoin, but the technology that powers Bitcoin is blockchain. And so by introducing Bitcoin, he introduced blockchain. And um, as, as I was reading more about when I, when, I, when I had that problem at the beginning, that's when I found out people have been talking about cryptocurrencies. People are talking about um, Bitcoin and all, but they don't talk about the blockchain, the technology that is um, under Bitcoin that powers everything about it. And it can offer, and cryptocurrency is just one application of what a blockchain can do. And so at the end of the presentation, I'm going to talk about what else, what else it can do. So in a very short version, what the blockchain is, it is a distributed ledger of continuously growing list of encrypted transactions called blocks um, across a peer-to-peer -peer network. So I have um, this diagram right here. We are all familiar with databases. We're all software developers. Um, we have a, cent a centralized database. It's like um, there's one server that controls everything. We know a decentralized version of that. Is there's different copies of it, but there's still one server that um, connects them all. And then a, distribu a distributed or a distribution blockchain, it's like all the dots right here, they have um, the exact data that everything has. So everyone has a copy of everything. Not just one, and they all connect to one. Everyone has a copy of that. Okay, so that's the basic idea of a blockchain. Going back to my description, so it's a distributed, I saw, I showed you what distributed is, and it's a ledger, a continuously growing list of encrypted transactions. So, accounting people, what, what, what does a ledger do? What is a ledger? Can you see that? So, um, in accounting, it's in any ledger, for you start, you start a row with like, um, your balance, say you, add, you added 25,000 in your money, um, you give 2000 to Francis, for example, and then you record the new balance, 23, yeah, yes, 23,000. And then um, if you want to add more, you, add, you each transaction has to be an next row. In a paper, in a, you know, manual bookkeeping, manual accounting, for example, you made a mistake. Oh, I didn't mean to give Francis 2000. I just want to give him 20 bucks. It was a typo. <laughs> Sorry, Francis. I can't on a paper. I can go back to like maybe change change that row, the second row, and then change the balance of everything else. I can't. No, it's going to be messy. But I can do that in Excel. I can go to that second row, and everything else will just automatically change, right? Every every balance um, will change if I change that to, to 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 twenty. But in the blockchain, once you add a transaction to it, it's there. It's final. You just gotta say please to Francis and like Francis, can you give me back? Back? Can you give me back how much? Uh, the 19, 1980. <laughs> and let's just hope that Francis will give it back, back to you because no, <laughs> because uh, it's the final. It's blockchain um, and that's that's why they say the blockchain is very secure. They say blockchain is like so promising because it's final, it's right there, it's, it's distributed, it's secure. You, if you have, if you are like a hacker and you plan to even change the 2000 to something, you, know, you think you're so smart and you can hack that in the blockchain, you can't, there's a reason why you, you're not going to be able to do that. Okay? And we'll talk about that. And um, another promise of the blockchain um, across a peer to peer network. And this is what the promise of a Bitcoin is. They are getting rid of the middleman. That the reason why people, especially evangelists, love uh, digital currencies is because there's no middleman, there's no banks, there's no um, governing body on um, to to man everything that's going on. A person can directly transact with another person. It's a real peer-to-peer -peer, um, communication. You don't need a bank. You don't need any middleman. Um, and in terms of uh, Maybe I'll save this for later. Yeah, I'll just save this for later. Um, yeah, there's no middleman. There's no um, someone who can, there's no bank who can grab fees from your transactions. Like, okay, I'm just going to grab, get 2% of the transaction. So, you know, they earn more. So instead of giving the full money to the, to the other person, they get a little bit of that 
in exchange of them, you know, watching over the transaction, making sure that this person does have the right amount of money to be able to be given to this person. Like, that's what banks do. That's what the, the middleman do. Um, but in blockchain, rest assured, it's called a trustless, um, trustless distributed ledger. Because you don't, these two people don't even need to know each other. They don't need to trust each other. It's trustless. If you do your transactions in a blockchain, rest assured that um, they have the right amount of um, account, I mean, um, balance. Um, you, don't, you don't need a bank to watch over everything, okay? So um, before I proceed, any, any questions about that? It's very high level, I understand, and we're going to go deeper into it, but just a high level question, yes. Yes. You cannot do it on your personal machine, but yeah, every it's showed we'll have to have an exact copy of everything. Yeah, it's not it's not gonna be it's yeah. You're gonna be your electricity bill will probably be like <laughs> yeah, you can do it on your on your on your laptop. But. As um, that's a good question. I'll, I'll wait on that till the end, right? Okay. Um, not, you know, not, each, not each transaction, but yeah. Okay. So, and by the way, since, since I did that, um, the, the next part, it's going to be a little confusing. So just save, save your questions, just, you know, and then we'll have a part for like question. Okay. But I'll do like maybe two more, two more questions part. Let's do how, how does it work? So blockchain contains a block. Um, what a block is, it contains um, data, and in the Bitcoin blockchain, there's many different blockchains, right? Bitcoin is its own blockchain. Um, and I'm going to use Bitcoin uh, as an example in many of my, in, in these. Um, in the Bitcoin blockchain, its data is like many, many transactions. Each block can have one to thousands of transactions, so that's, that's the data. Uh, and, and a transaction is like the center, the receiver, and the amount of Bitcoin that you're going to send, okay? Um, it has a hash, it has a unique identity of that block, and it has um, the hash of the previous block. And that's, and as I go through this, oh wait, and I'll just, I'll just go through it. And what that means is, as a chain, each block can refer to the other block through um, the hash. So this block knows the hash of the previous one, and all of them know that, except for the very first one, that's called the Genesis block, the Genesis block, it's, it's a, the previous hash of that is just zeros. Um, but the entire chain knows the other, the previous um, block before it. And so if you think you can um, tamper the chain, you want to like hack it whatsoever, you're going to, you want to put the money to your account or whatever, you are going to have to um, if, you, if you change the data, so the hash um, is computed using the data that you put in it, okay? Um, so if you change the data, the hash will change. And so if the hash will change, you have to change all the succeeding hashes before it. You follow so far? You follow so far? And so if I'm going to, it's like Aaron, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to hack the, the network, and I, I change the hash of one block, it's going to take this computer centuries before I even solve all the hashes all the way from the Genesis, Genesis block. And there's no such, I mean, it's not possible because um, computers get smarter each year, they get faster and whatever, you know, it's not possible, but, um, and that, I'm gonna talk about that towards the end, like the limitations of it, but it's, it's gonna take time for you to even try to compute for the hashes of, all the way to the end of the chain. Okay, so, um, so that's what it looks like. And as I mentioned, it's distributed every, um, node, every computer has a copy of the exact same chain, and when you add transactions to it, when you add a block to it, um, everybody, every node, they all mine, they all check if, if the next block that you're trying to add is, you know, and the, they race, they race each other to like which block should go next, okay? And then when, after it's verified, they all should agree, not all, there should be a consensus. 51% uh, of all the nodes should agree that this is the next block. This is the right. Um, this is the right block that should be added. Uh, for example, in the distributed network, it's 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 in the entire world, right? For example, you have a, an, a node in Russia, and like they have their own 
compute computing thing whatsoever and like um i computed this one do you think that's all right but like everywhere else in the u.s and china and all like no this this is this is the first one who mined this block every 51 percent of the nodes should agree that um that is the block that should be added to the team okay uh, so far okay so a little high level let's do let's do a little bit of coding uh okay, okay. let's do the time Okay. Wait, sorry, what was the first part of the question? I mean, do you have a ledger of every blockchain transaction oh. that has ever happened, or is it just specific? No, each blockchain has its own. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me copy. Okay, so let's do some coding just to give just to um understand how blockchain works. This is we're gonna create our own tiny blockchain. If I can have it. Who's on else? Oh. Okay. And then I'm going to maybe this is low. Let's let's share this. Yay. Oh no. And then, okay. I'm going to use Eclipse for this demo. That's good. Can you see that? Okay. Oh, let's remove this thing in the middle. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna create our own any blockchain. Very basic version, definitely not production level, but just to give just to give you an understanding of what do you mean by mining, what do you mean, what do you mean by how, how can I be sure that it is really safe? What do you mean by what do you mean by that? So um, first, I created a class called Block. Um, as I mentioned in my slide, it has the three main um, contents: it has hash, the previous hash, and the data. Um, and then we're gonna give it a timestamp as well, so that the computation of the hash is unique. And then the nonce, you can just ignore that for now, and then we'll talk about that later, okay? So if I am to create a constructor for my block class, it's going to take the data and the previous hash. Um, you set it to the data previous hash, you create a timestamp, and then using that, you calculate the hash for the block, right? And that's how you create um, the hash for that block. Uh, and then the calculate hash function is very simple. Just, um, for this for this example, we're just going to use the um, SHA-256 um, encryption uh, hashing algorithm. You guys familiar with that? We're not going to go through that. But um, the secure hash algorithm, 256, um, is a one-directional encryption algorithm, right? It's um, using using the data you compute you um, you do an algorithm and compute for a hash for it and you cannot from that hash you cannot produce the data from it all you can do is one directional you all you can do is provide the data you think come up with that hash, okay okay but it just computes for this for a hash of that using the previous hash the current time stamp, and i commented out the nonce for now um, later we're going to use that and then the data and that's that's the hash that's it that's a block okay now that we have a block, we can create a chain. Um, I called my chain inspired by. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Inspired by our kitchen. I called it the Milano chain. Um, so our Milano chain um, consists of a blockchain. I just used an array list for that. Um, and then the difficulty, we'll talk about that later. Um, and then I'm going to create the Genesis block, which is the very first block of the chain. I just pass it the data, which is, you know, just any, for now, just a random string. And then because it's the first one, it doesn't have a previous hash, so we just use zero. And then we add it to the block. And um, let's comment out the mining part for now. And let's, let's just, I have at the very bottom of this function, of my main function, I have a print chain, which should just, just print. The block. So if you look at if you look at what Milano chain looks like, it's just it contains one block. It has that hash. It has the previous hash of zero, the data, 
and then define stem. And then I'll talk about it later. Okay. So let's add another block. Let's do that. Um, for my second block, I gave it this message, hey, second block in the house. And then using this, I grab the the previous hash and then I use that hash and then I pass that as in my in my constructor and comment this out for now and let's just look at what that looks like okay so now our con our block our chain contains two blocks um, the previous hash refers to the hash of the first one follow okay um, and I mentioned before this is uh, this is not yeah as I mentioned before before you can add a second block actually before I should have done this I should have mined the first block first because that's that's how the blockchain works. You have to mine the block before um, you can add another one because you have to make sure that um, all the nodes agree, all all the nodes are mining and making sure that um, that block is the right block. It's um, it's not corrupted or whatever. So um, so I have a function called mine block, uh, which I will call from from the block from the first block of the chain. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about what mine block does. Um, so but before I do that, I need to decide a difficulty for a blockchain. Each blockchain has its own difficulty level. For this demo, I'm just going to use a difficulty of one. Litecoin, which is a, a lighter version of Bitcoin, um, of a digital currency, has like 200,000 something of difficulty. But for this demo, we're just going to use one. Okay. And, and what does that mean? And well, let's, let's look at the at the mind block uh, function. Oh, let me just expand that. Well, what that means? Very simple. Well, it can mean differently each blockchain. Um, they they can have different um, different ways to use the difficulty, make it a little bit more difficult. Um, but for this demo, for a basic blockchain, what a difficulty means is um, it has to meet a certain criteria, and for that criteria, for this blockchain, I say that the hash that will be computed, and you don't know how a hash is computed, right? We don't. The algorithm is just random, random letters, random number, whatsoever. Um, it has its own algorithm. You can't predict the hash that it's going to create, and so the difficulty level means you have to keep trying to produce a hash that will meet my criteria, which is it should start with one zero. If I change my difficulty to two, it means I need my hash should start with two zeros. You follow? And so, like Litecoin, like 200,000 or whatsoever, it has many, many, um, you know, difficulty level and I mean, yeah, and uses, but at least for this demo, I just want the hash to start with one zero. Okay? So that's, that's what this, um, my target is. It should start with how many number, new power rate, how many number of zeros at the beginning of the hash. I print the hash. I have a lot of loggers here. I print the hash. Um, and like I mentioned, I keep trying. It's a while loop. I keep trying to calculate my hash until I have a hash that meets my criteria, which is, is to start with zero. And then to, 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 help, to help with um, the computing, the calculation of the hash, we introduce a nonce. A nonce means it's a number used once. So, um, each time you compute for the hash, um, the hash changes, right? So if you and for for this for this um, blockchain for this demo, I just increment it from zero. Um, it's just a uh, yeah, it's integer default value zero. So I just in, increment it each time I try to calculate a new hash. Um, for other for other blockchains, it's it could be generated randomly, um, but it's it should only be used once. You cannot. You don't want to use that twice because that means, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so I have like some loggers here. Does this hash start with how many number of zeros that I want? Okay, so, um, and then if if it does, if I, if I meet my criteria right up here, I'm going to say, yay, I, I mined the block. And after so many tries, I just, I just have that logger. All right, so let's uncomment the nonce here. And, yep, everything is good on this one. And let's mine the first block. Let's also mine the second one. 
just so spark one. Let's look at what that does. Okay, very fast. Trying, can you guys read that? Trying to mine block one. At the very, when you first created your block, when you constructed it, the hash starts with A, B, 9, 9, whatsoever. And the mining has to keep trying and trying until it finds one zero. And the last one that is, the last hash that it computed was zero, nine, six, whatsoever, after six tries. Okay, first block is mined. Second block, trying to mine block two. Try, 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 can't find the first zero at the beginning. It found it after the 18th try. And that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Milano chain contains these two um, blocks. Both hashes should start with one zero. Hello? Um, let's try to um, add another, or let's just do it one by one. Another block. Uh, hmm. Okay, oh, that's, that changed. The first block was able to find it, was able to find a good hash after 39 tries. And then the second block, 17. And the third block, it got lucky, um, just three tries. And then it, find, it found the right um, hash for that block. You guys follow that? Um, let's change it up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna change the difficulty to three. What does that mean? Three zeros at the beginning. How many tries with, yeah. Wait, I told you. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's a coding. Is it repeated? Oh, is the output? Yeah, 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 what, what's your question? Oh, oh, each block has its own nonce. The, 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 so it's not repeated because it starts from zero for each block. Yes, yes, because each each of the blocks has its own timestamp, so you only need to change um, one thing for each block, yeah, and then the other one, even if it's also the same one nonce, the timestamp is different on the other block when you created it. Yep, yep. Okay, so what did I say? Oh, three, three zeros, three difficulty. And let's try how many, let's see how many times it tries to compute for. 5,000 for the first block, 5,000 something, 3,000 for the other one, 3,000 for the third block. And that's, and that's what mining does. It's going to try to um, compute until it reaches that difficult level, um, until it tries to reach that, that criteria. And why, why, do, why do blockchains um, need to make the, why does it have to have a very high difficulty? Why does it have to compete for that so much long? And that was my problem at the very beginning. Like, what is this trying to solve? Maybe I can do it. Um, but no, it has to be difficult. It has to be hard so that a hacker like Francis will be, will make it really hard. I, I'm really, really picking on you. Um, will make it really hard for you to just mine a single block. And so if you try to um, hack it somewhere in the middle of the chain, you have to, Take so much and power to rip everything, as I mentioned at the beginning. You have to make sure that the rest um, of the chains that you're trying to fake and to tamper um, will take that much time. And so it, it should never happen. It, yeah, I said I say should because it will not happen. It will take centuries. It will take centuries for you to. It will take such power. Um, it could be. It might need the entire China, maybe more than just China, for you to be able to compute for all for all that for all the entire chain. And when when did the blockchain when did Bitcoin in, um, get started in 2009? So all this computing power that it has started since then, you have to repeat that if you want to um, tamper that. And so we want to make sure that the chains have a high difficulty level. And it's not just my in my example. I only wanted to start with zero. Other chains have other other criteria for you to be able to um, say that you mine that block. Okay. Yes, do Sabine first. Mm -hmm. Any number, yeah, because this is my Milano chain. Yeah, this is just my, my blockchain. Yeah. Yeah. Can I can I double check that? 
Oh, where's my safari? Say what? We can on on our own. This, this is my our own chain. Uh, what did I say? Um, see. Do you know? No. Oh yeah. What are you doing? You can read that, right? <laughs> uh, what did I say? I thought I, thought I said 2,000 something. 200,000 something? Okay. I might have lied. I'm kidding. Oh, wait. What? 8 million? Where did I get the 200,000? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Where did I get that? Okay. I totally lied. Pass rate? Maybe this is what my eyes were. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, it has, yeah. Uh, it takes this much. Bitcoin, I know, okay, this one, I'm not, I'm not lying. Each block um, can be computed after every, uh, every 10 minutes. So um, that's, just, that's just how it works. Yeah, it is definitely 8 million. I totally lied. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the code. I'm, we're almost done with the coding part. Okay. Um, so, like I said, yeah, for this one, well, we only have three. Uh, where's the mouse? Oh, it's over there. Go back. Oh, wait, no. Okay. Uh, scroll down. Okay. Um, so, at least we know that... Um, each, each block should refer to the previous block, and we just have to make sure, like, at the end, like, all the time, we should make sure that the chain is always secure. Um, so we're just, we just have, like, a is chain valid at the end of the chain? It's like a, um, like a check for that. Uh, and what, what that does is just, excuse me, goes through each block of the chain, iterates over that, compares the, the, the hash of the previous one, and then the previous one's hash against the other previous one as well and then in the end it has to make sure that the last block has, has already been mined um just that and and then that's you can tell that this chain my milano chain is a is it a valid blockchain it's secure blockchain is valid true okay so if we try to what can we change if we try to change the hash of um the second block for example just do oh wait no not just that I need the entire thing ooh, ooh. We try to change the hash and it should just um it just uh, oh what am I missing oh another closing mm -mm -mm. It's just going to say that my blockchain is not valid because one of one of the chain one of the blocks do not have right um this hash okay so that's the basic idea you guys following that's good okay yeah just the basic idea of that um let's go back to my slides any questions for now while i drink my water yes Aaron. so you're talking earlier about Uh -huh. What happens to everyone that failed that? Oh, great question. Thank you. I got a prize. I don't have prizes. Just kidding. Um, I forgot to yeah to mention that. Um, so I, did, I didn't mention that mining this um like for example Bitcoin itself is like so impossible to say, mine it for yourself. You have to join a mining pool because there's so you, it takes so much time because of the difficulty, right? And so so many miners are out there trying to meet each other and. Yeah, you're you're not gonna you're not you're not always gonna be the first one. Um, so when the first one is always there, you just have to respond and like, okay, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna mine for the next block. Okay, so you're you're just out. And I forgot to mention since you mentioned since you asked that, um, when you mine, that's why mining creates coins, right? When you mine, the chain thanks you for doing that computation, and with that computation, you help secure the network, right? And because you're helping secure the network, you get some points, you get some money. And if you're like the, the miner, miner that I have at home, um, it's only part of a bigger mining pool. And so if 
if the pool of thousands of hundreds of um, of miners, when they when they mine a block, they get for Bitcoin you get 12.5 Bitcoin each block, and that's being um, split between between <laughs> between many of the miners. So um, every day I get we just get like 0. 0.000 something coin. I think he's, he's using Ethereum, so Ether's not Bitcoin or for the one we have at home. So you just get 0. 0.000 something as a reward. The word is reward for doing the work, and it's called proof of work when you when you mine. Um, so did I answer your question? I made it really long, but the short answer to your question is just um, you you lost you, you lost the race. You mark for the next block. Yeah, that's the short version. Next question. Hmm. Hmm. That's true. That is true. We Oh no 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 no. Not not all the way. Not all the way. You don't need to because the last one has been checked. Oh, right. Yeah, you just need to check the the last one. Yeah. But it's just at the words I just have like <laughs> you maybe you can construct it more towards the end. Look, yeah, we'll we'll continue for now, and then maybe yeah, you'll have a. Okay, thank you for your question, and thank you for answering your own question. Okay, um, we're now going to the different use cases of blockchain. You guys can read that, right? Can you? <laughs> can I can I zoom on the slide? I don't think so. I'm just so for this presentation. I'm just gonna talk about four. Um, for the many, many use cases on the blockchain. Obviously, in the finance world, finance industry, the digital currencies, they're changing, they're changing the way we transact. We just use on um, digital, I mean, yeah, digital transactions. Um, this is also very helpful, um, yeah, very helpful in certain countries where there's no, um, there's no, the, the, when people cannot trust their governments, when people cannot trust their banks, they they use um, some kind of blockchain. They use oh, they use Bitcoin or whatsoever to transact with each other. And th there's no middleman. There's no governing body about uh, planning all that uh, all that's going on between the people among the people. Um, and there, that's the that's like the half glass full of it. Um, that yeah, no one's no one's um, asking for transaction fees. No one's reading. Um, Manning the thing at the same time the half glass empty of that is it's it, Bitcoin is used in the black market because no one's no one's say what yeah no one can trace it no one yeah yeah the, the accounts are anonymous you can't you know you just know that you can transact um, the money and you don't yeah you can point pinpoint that to the right person so it's just you know how you want to use that so hopefully hopefully. If you create your own blockchain, your own cryptocurrency, or whatsoever, um, use it on the on the good side, um, the good side of the, uh, ethics or ethical consultants. <laughs> uh, land title registration. This is a very good example uh, use case of a blockchain because what a blockchain does is really just records it and it's just forever. And um, if you say if you say um, Francis owns this this land, this piece of land, and Katie goes, no, I have the right title. This is my this is the title. I own that piece of land. We go to the blockchain check. The last time this land was here, it was it belonged to Victoria. Sorry, <laughs> I almost said the. You know what I mean? They always. I'll just say Victoria. Um, so none of you, none of you really own this land. So because the blockchain has the data that cannot be tampered, it has you know just a list of evidence. Um, yeah, that is safe. Supply chain management. For this one, I have a short video. Um, from the Microsoft Azure website. I like it, so uh, I'm just gonna share that with you. And let's raise the, hello? Ah! 
Me for that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Save me for the presentation. Yes, question, Topper. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, said, I was like, my eyes. Look. Yes, Topper. Um, so it seems like that. Uh, I guess Azure is responsible for having a bunch of different. I mean, who maintains the blockchain? Because there's only, I mean, there has to be a lot of instances of it, otherwise, it's not secure. Right, yes. Yeah. So that just means that, uh, like, Microsoft is saying, hey, we have a bunch of servers. Okay, so that's a that's a good question. Yeah. So for this case, they have their own private blockchain. That's like there's a public and there's a private blockchain. Ethereum, Bitcoin, so those are all public blockchains. Each company can have their own bank events um, as well. They have their own private blockchain, and the different nodes that consist of that um, could be like the manufacturer, like whoever, whoever wants to be part of that. It's, uh, What's the word that I'm looking for? Economy? Uh, yeah, I guess it's a, uh, yeah. Or I've got the, that network. Yeah. So, um, yeah, did I have any questions? Yeah, I think the, 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 the five of them are basically just whoever yeah. chooses to participate. Exactly, yeah. Just the people mm -hmm. within that, not not open to the public. Um, yeah, I, I think Jeff even asked, what, why would I mind? Uh, for example, like what I'm doing, what we're doing at home, why would I mind in the Microsoft Azure box? No, you don't mind there. You only mind for for the public ones and those that you know you can use the money, um, the the coins um, that is produced for that. So they have their own miners. They have that is used. Maybe not. I, I don't know. Maybe not um, coins to be you know to be translated. Uh, yeah, translated to like dollars, but within within the network of, of that street. Okay. There was another question with me, John? Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, um, so in this example here, Microsoft presumably has some sort of security to prevent some random you know, Yahoo from attending data. Yes, yes. So they have their own steps. And additionally, the, um, the, that, um, the manufacturer, whoever is using it, is paying Microsoft. Yes. For, for, for Microsoft to operate the servers, they're paying for the servers. Ah. That's how money comes into it. Real money. So, in other words, for Microsoft, they're running on their servers, it's costing them electricity. Mm -hmm. So, if they're making money from the supply chain, people that's, in it paying into Microsoft. Right, that's, a good, that's a good question. It's like, and what, what do you mean by this middleman in the property? Is that, is, that what, is that what you're asking? Well, oh, okay. well where is the money coming? Real money because they're not doing it for free. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, just maybe just use dollars to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I, I think I think okay, I haven't used the Microsoft services, but I think they just they pay to be part of the private block of that block, private blockchain that Microsoft owns. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, they just have to yeah, because it's provided by blockchain and they they develop the chain. They have their own rules, so they just have to pay to be part of that. Uh, but they don't. It's it's just a, it's it's security um, for the supplier um, so that for example the ice cream maker like uh, are you sure that that milk is safe and whatever and then oh yeah I'm sure I didn't my my truck wasn't delayed for a day we you know you can trust each other I can keep ordering to you because I trust you because the blockchain helps us trust each other right so like. Yeah, like rest assured, Walmart. Yeah, Walmart um, is partnering. I I didn't like their video, so I use Microsoft Azure. Um, but Walmart is partnering with IBM to ensure that all the their produce coming from the source is safe and what and whatnot. And so farmers um, get a benefit on that because they can tell Walmart, here's the proof that our produce is safe and and you know safe for you to give to your um, customers. And Walmart. Get the benefit that okay, this farm is being honest. This, this farm is sure that um, the produce is safe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a transaction that needs to be valid. Mm -hmm. Someone's paying someone else. Mm -hmm. So they're presumably paying into this public system. That, hey, I want to take advantage of a validated transaction. Now. Okay, so um, let's look at let's look at um, uh, what's a good um, let's look at what's this website. Uh, so, in what do you mind? Anybody here minds? Anybody here? Oh, how about anybody who owns any digital currency? Uh, no, you do. Okay, so I think so. When how did you? Take part of it. You created, you create an account. You have a wallet, right, where it stores um, the digital currency. So I think that's, that's how you you join. Um, Thank you, Luis. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. So if you if you transfer ten bitcoins to um, Luis, it'll, for it to be mined, it takes ten minutes to be confirmed. Yeah, yeah, because that's when the next block gets gets mined. Um, we opened up. Um, Etherscan website, Ether, etherscan.io. Um, this is um, Ethereum's blockchain. It's it's public. It's just a, a, an explorer for the entire chain. You can see um, each transaction. You can see each block has a like a, a unique number. Um, no. <laughs> um, it could, yeah. So it has that hash. Um, it was successful. The block height. Four block confirmations. I don't know what that means. Uh, it was one minute ago when it was mined, or yeah, 
this is a oh no, this is a transaction, so it's not mine. It's added to to this block. There you go. Um, from this address to this address, as limit that is the um, that is the cost for cost to um, make a transaction, whatever transaction that you do. Um, gas price. Um, oh, gas limit. Okay, I'm confused. Gas price is it takes 0.004 ether for you to um, um, do the transaction in the in the chain. Uh, for gray, it's just like a smaller denomination for ether. Uh, input data. It's weird. It's just zero. Oh, there's nothing. Nonce use the 665 whatsoever. Let's look at. Uh, well, you can just look at this um, last scene 27 seconds ago, and you can see the value um, ether that were that that was used, um, and then there's contact. And um, let me just go back to my slide quickly, and then we'll go back to that. So, um, last use case um, is the sharing economy. Um, any idea what sharing economy is? I'm pretty sure everyone is part of it. Say so what? Zipcar. Zipcar? I don't know that. What is that? Uh, where unused um, get a ride. Is that the one that's like you have a car that's not used and then someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you used that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you used that? <laughs> I, I like, yeah. But I heard, yeah, I think I know what it's talking about. Yeah, that's that's one example. Any any service that are manned by, by normal, I mean, where the producer and the um, support consumer, the producer and the consumer are just like normal people. Um, that's part of the sharing economy. I have a, an extra bed. I have an extra room. Um, why not rent it for the weekend? Airbnb. I have. I'm going to DC anyway. Why not have someone ride with me? Uber. Right. That's that's the sharing economy. Uh, those are like um, companies that that um, part of the sharing economy. But it's not a real peer to peer. Um, platform because there's still Uber, there's still Air Airbnb, there's still fees that you pay for them to um, to man the platform. But a real blockchain, but a real peer-to-peer -peer network. You don't need an Uber, you don't need an Airbnb company. You just, you know, some hopefully some good people will create. Hopefully, coming from this audience, will create a blockchain and. That will just allow people to directly communicate with each other. Like, hey, do you have a? Are you going to DC? I don't have a ride with you and all. Um, right? Because there's a, like I said, there's a good day. Someone is manning manning the platform, but the the bad side of it is, um, like what happened in Texas. There was a time when the Texas, in Austin, Texas, um, when the government required all Uber drivers to have fingerprinting, and Uber. Just doesn't do that. They don't need fingerprints. They do background checks, but they don't need to keep track of the fingerprints of their drivers. And because the government and Uber can't um, agree, Uber was not allowed to operate in the whole um, Austin, Texas. And so, who who suffered? It's the people, the drivers, and the commuters. They're like, we just want to ride. Why why make this all so difficult for us? And that's you know that's like the sad part of it. It's, has a good side, but the sad part is the middleman can also cause problems to a sharing economy that's supposed to be powered by the people themselves. So, um, so, help, so blockchain can help can help in that. And it say here smart contracts, and that's that's the Ethereum icon. Um, smart contracts are um, that's going to be like total new talk Ethereum, maybe maybe for my next year. Um, smart contracts are like soft are small um, pieces of software that you can. It's like you can deploy it on the chain. Then when you trigger it, when you it can execute, and um, it'll it'll just have its own its own logic right there on the chain. It's just living there in the chain. For example, um, I do a transaction, um, and I, uh, for example, I provide a service, and then Victoria wants to buy from my service. Um, we can we execute a smart contract that's deployed on the chain and say, okay, Victoria paid me what I need to do and I didn't give my part of the deal. I didn't provide the service. I didn't give whatever that has to be done. And the smart contract, it can do like, no, one party didn't do part of the deal. So, you, you know, you, you, that co smart contract can be with the money or like, or like charge me or whatever. It can do many different things. It's, it's software. You can do whatever. We can write our own software, our own smart contract actually. Uh, which I said can be another talk using um, solidity, 
um, language for you to write smart contracts and deploy it to the Ethereum network. And say what? Sounds like workflow. What is that in, in, our, in our system? I don't know. I only know projects. So <laughs> I don't know any other. <laughs> I don't know any other parts of, of vantage point. I'm like so, I'm like so much into, into the project module. Uh, where, did I, where did I Safari go? Uh, I just, we have one minute. Um, uh, six, of the, uh, yeah. One minute. These are just not random people writing their own applications and deploying it on the Ethereum network. They can they write they write games they write whatever application that they can do using smart contracts and deploy it there. They have like a, a weird app one of, that are that is here. Um, save a picture. Save uh, I mean yeah. Save a picture. Get get a picture of yourself and save it on the blockchain and it'll be there forever. Right. So that's. Like the blockchain is forever, it's, it's spread across the world. If if a Washington DC data center dies, it's still there in other other countries. So, um, so yeah, you can check out this website and see um, the different apps that you can do on the blockchain. And since I'm out of time, I'm just gonna give, I just need to show, uh, my mouse. I need to show my last slide. Oh, limitations, I'm limited in time. It's very complex, 51% attack is, um, if, if it happens that the entire China, Russia, whatever, um, all uh, work together and say this is the new chain, and you know all the nodes from all those places say that it's the new chain, and then um, it, it's not, it doesn't become like a consensus because it's like you know like planned, then the blockchain is in trouble. It's not secure anymore because for some reason they are able to um, beat the 51% of the nodes and environment costs. My electricity bill is triple, so it uses a lot of resources whatsoever, so it's, it's one of the limitations of blockchain. So as my last slide, I mentioned this, I didn't, I didn't want to, but I mentioned it earlier. This is from Vitalik Buterin, um, the inventor of Ethereum. Um, blockchain, um, in, in, in summary, it's blockchain it doesn't, maybe doesn't make much sense in the U.S. and in countries in the West because um, like they trust their banks, they trust their government. I mean, I don't know, trust their government, Google, Facebook. Um, but in other countries, Africa, Eastern Europe, Russia, they don't trust their government, they don't trust anybody, they don't trust their banks. And so that's when that's when blockchains um, have a promise for these other countries and other use cases um, for, for these people. So when, when there's a motivation like that, you know, Bitcoin has its issues from 20,000 US dollars. Now it's like 6,000, 7,000, I think, um, worth. So it has its issues and all, but just think about, just think about the cryptocurrency, just think about the individual applications, think about what blockchain can offer, um, because it's secure and all and flexible and whatsoever, um, to, to us. Um, and that, thank you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, we're stop recording. Uh, no, I think I can do it here. I should be if I can find it. Did it? That's a good question. Okay, 